Tony D and Little Joan with a screenwriter's rant on Cheer for Your Life, a movie about cheerleaders in high school who uh, have to go through initiation week, which turns deadly. Smash like and subscribe. Thank you for smash liking and subscribing. Thank you, Little Joan. Check out my books. The links are in the description. Comedy Horror in South Jersey. It's the Pineys, book one through eight. Thanks a lot for uh, coming out to the Summer Book Fest in Flemington, New Jersey. It was a great day. I'm really tired. Uh, sold a lot of books. It was a late day. And uh, that's why my videos are so late. Anyhow, so this, uh, the, I guess their team are, are the bees. Here's one of the cheerleaders gets murdered uh, because the super psycho head cheerleaders, they're the queen bees, uh, the queens, and that the other girls are just the bees. And this, this is the psycho cheerleader who I think is killing them, although she may be a decoy. Because apparently she went through hell and now she wants to take it out on the freshman girls who want to be cheerleaders. And she takes it way too far. So one of the girls dies. Then one of the mothers or teachers tries to defend the girls. She gets beat up in a parking lot and a car stolen. Um... Then, like, they do all sorts of horrible things. They nearly get run over one night when they're taken out there, and they, they just keep getting abused, and it just escalates. And then one of the girls quits unexpectedly after being given permission to join, but it turned out she had to, she had to come to a party where the uh, football players get to all have sex with her, and... Um, the head cheerleader is in on it because she said, you have to do it because I have to do it. And, and she's a total psycho. And so are the guys. So this is a crazy movie about total psychopaths who were the popular kids somehow at a at high school. Directed by Jared Cohn. Written by Lee Gorlitz. Um, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. I know that's kind of backhanded. But um, it's it's got some it's got some believability to it um, because it's the girls sort of doing this on their own a lot of times, and they're skirting the parents in order to do this, and it's something that you know cheer girls who want to be cheerleaders do want, and. This is like every bad story you heard about, you know, cheerleader initiation. And it, it does happen. Just like the guys did it, uh, the girls do similar things. But normally it's supposed to be like a harmless prank. They do something gross. You know, it's not supposed to be like you have sex with anybody or, you know, it's supposed to be they test your endurance and patience and make you do a bunch of stupid stuff. And they were going to let you in anyway because you were the hottest girls in the school and that's who always gets picked for these things. But so, you know, it, it's it's not bad for what it is. Now, normally these movies are pretty two-dimensional and this one kind of is, but not as two-dimensional as you might think. There's some, there's a little bit of dimension to these characters because there's a bit of a build, at least in this trailer. So I'm not totally down on it. The problem is, it's a bit of a dated concept. This idea that, you know, high schoolers are going to haze somebody. I mean, do you know how insanely uh, negative this is for school to have, right? Like, they just don't allow this anymore in schools. They just won't. And you've got scenes of uh, the girls doing this to other girls, and... It's kind of being tolerated in the school, if you know what I mean. And it shouldn't be. And it wouldn't be at a normal school, at 99% of schools. Now, I'm sure there's a few where it's still tolerated. Maybe if you did this as a period piece, it would work better. Um, but it just, that portion of it feels dated. Like back in the 80s when they made these movies, yeah. Because people got initiated, you know, if you joined the football team, you got initiated. You know, the, the, the old guys would haze the new guys. Now, they wouldn't haze them like in college. They would just snap towels or do stuff. Like, 
I'm sure the girls did it too. Uh, but again, it would it was mostly all in fun. Some of it was a little mean spirited. Some of it could get out of control, but not like where people died. But that being said, that portion of this is done as best you could with that material. So the script's not bad. I like the script in that the screenwriter is setting up characters to give them a little bit of depth so you feel like it's not totally an unnatural progression for this to happen. But it is unnatural sort of on its surface. You see what I'm saying? So it's not bad. Um, I mean, obviously you got a lot of attractive young women in it. Um, so that's an appeal for the audience. I mean, who wants to watch a bunch of uggos jumping around? But you are, are seeing sort of a an old style concept, an old style paradigm that kind of doesn't really exist much anymore. It just it just doesn't because the, you know the moment somebody steps out of line in a high school these days, the parents are on the phone suing somebody, right? Like you could totally see a parent like. Oh, let me make a phone call here. I'm going to sue the school as my daughter gets on the cheer team and is, you know, gets to twirl the baton or whatever. And like five minutes after that phone call, they they chastise these girls. And guess what? She gets on the team because they don't want to be sued. That's easier than getting sued. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I don't I don't know how realistic this movie is. But again, that being said, it has a nice progression. So first act. Um, there are these two friends who they're practicing being uh, cheerleaders and uh, they've got the, the, the sort of older classmates who are jerks and they're going to haze them. And it probably starts out as good natured fun at first. And they're, they're on the cheer squad, but will they stay? They're like, you know, they have to wear like gym clothes or whatever. And then one of the girls who's in, in the mix, who's not tolerating this this older girl hazing her uh, dies but it looks like an accident it looks like she slipped in the shower so they continue on with life without her even though that's again it usually drives everything to a halt in the school when a student dies like that but let let's again set it aside so then uh, a teacher speaks up and she's uh, carjacked and beaten up and now the girls are putting it together. They're like, hey, this, this, ain't, this ain't cool, right? So we're into the second act already, and uh, it gets worse and worse. The hazing gets worse, and the question is, who's doing this? Are the cheerleaders doing this? This hooded guy seems to be doing this. Who is he? Um, and then it gets worse and worse. The, the queen bees put on the pressure. They make them drink honey in a scene. And any girl who could drink the honey gets to go to a party, right? So one of the girl, two of the girls do it. So they're invited to the party. And then one of them quits the cheer team. And the other girl's trying to figure out why. So this is a nice layering. It's not like so totally blatant, right? So she disobeys her mother in order to... First, she has to qualify, I guess, by, by doing something. I don't know. Something crazy. Something sort of semi-normal. But so she goes to the party, and when she gets there, um, the the uh, jock is there, and I think they drug her, a, a roofie her, and attempt to uh, uh, have like you know a bunch of the football players there, and they all try to you know, have sex with her basically. Um, so I don't know if they roofie her or not. But then you know the whole thing escalates. I, I'm pretty sure the football. It's pretty obvious that the football player is is the guy in the hood, but it might not be. There's enough elements here that the, it makes it a little gray. And then by the end of the movie, like, you know, the head cheerleader has a gun and they got him tied up on the bed and the mother's trying to help her. I mean, there's a lot going on. So the third act looks like it's going to be pretty wild and they have to fight the boys. So, I mean, it seems like a messed up town, but... In terms of a movie uh, called Cheer for Your Life, I mean, 
it's not the again it's not the worst thing i've ever seen now that being said would i see this movie i probably would only see this movie ironically you know if it was on i'd say oh my god cheer for your life is on all right let me watch this stupid movie like i wouldn't take it seriously like i wouldn't be scared by this movie uh i might be amused by it because it's just so overly dramatic or whatever but you know, again, I can appreciate the screenwriter at least trying to take this sort of dated concept that's a bit insane and trying to make the best out of it. And they, they seem to have some, some good moments here, you know, at least se semi-realistic. I know it's such a backhanded compliment, but it's like, I don't know if you can make this movie work today, you know, in the, in the environments we have in schools. I don't know if you can make this work unless it's a period piece. Now, if this takes place in the nineties or early two thousands, even okay. I can, it's more believable that, um, it doesn't appear to be that way, but that being said, I don't, I don't think, I think it would be pretty watchable. I wouldn't watch it. It's really not for me, but I think for someone who would want, you know, a teen drama movie like this, I think it would probably be a little better than average at least at least maybe even pretty good to you so anyhow i know that was a big ramble but cheer for your life is the name of the movie uh check it out and that's it for me tony d and little joan check us out on odyssey bit shoot and rumble sorry for the late videos we'll see you in the next one